Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. Heinrich likes to experiment with different colors and uh, we are going to have a look at what he had done with all the different pinks that he's put together with burnt sienna. So gear up and let's start. As always, all the links and descriptions are down below. Just click show more. Right. Keep your paper at a 45 degree angle and wet the paper up to your horizon line. Make sure that it's completely wet. And uh, he used a hockey brush to do this. A hockey is such an amazing brush to work with. And um, it wet the paper quite thoroughly. And he's also going to use the same brush to start painting the background. So on your palette at the moment, you have Lavender at number one, and you have Opera and Burnt Sienna at number two, and Dioxazine Violet and Burnt Sienna at number three. And he started with the Dioxazine mix, then he added the Lavender, and he is going to keep on going like that, adding all the mixtures. The next one after the Violet is going to be the Dioxazine again, a little bit, and then a little bit of opera and adding all the different kinds of mixes that he made at random. I think the burnt sienna brings all of it together, kind of, and um, it makes it for a very interesting sky. Now notice that the paint, even though the paper is at a 45 degree angle, the paint is not running down because you did not wet the bottom part of the painting. He cleaned the brush and now he's starting to put in the landscape area and uh, he's leaving plenty of white spaces and adding the colors, same colors that he used in the sky, in very light strokes to the bottom area, the bottom part of the painting plane and adding more burnt sienna and different colors, different layers to this bottom part. And remember you start with the lightest mix, very watery mix, and then you gradually add the darker mixes or darker pigments to your landscape. Very light strokes, keeping it very quick, very smooth, and be careful not to let your brush be too wet because then it runs and it will change your landscape quite a lot. So add your colors again randomly and try not to keep the lines in the same direction. Vary them because that will give interest. So he started with burnt sienna at the back there to start adding the background or the first layer of the trees and going darker into the foreground. This is pure dioxazine that he's adding, but because he's not cleaned the brush, it picks up the previous pigments that's on the paper and kind of mixes them for you. To help him to create a little bit of texture in the foreground, he's now going to add some salt. Ordinary table salt, just sprinkle it over your painting. Don't rub, just sprinkle it. And if the salt makes little air bubbles, then you know it's working. So let the painting dry naturally. Don't blow it with a hairdryer, it will blow the salt everywhere. Right, when your painting is dry, make sure that you rub off all the salt. Now he's using a Rubens fan brush to start creating the texture, the foliage of the trees in the background. Dipping it in the different shades of paint that is already used and very lightly dabbing out the trees at the back, only the canopies of the trees at the back. This is a magic brush. Lighter colors at the back, warmer, more dramatic colors in the front. 
Notice again that he's not cleaning the brush. He's just using the same brush in all the pigments and that helps to give variety of the different tones and hues that you get. Now he's going to use the Barbara number one rigger and very lightly draw in the trees at the back. You've created the foliage, now it's time to create the st uh, stems and the trunks, but very lightly because it's supposed to be very, very far in the background. So they faint, not in your face. He's still using the rigger, but now he is going to start drawing in trees that are closer to the foreground. So sort of kind of in the middle of the painting plane. And uh, they are going to be a little bit more prominent, warmer colors, and uh, a little bit darker, just a teeny bit darker. Because if you go dark too quickly, then it's going to ruin your painting. So gradually build them up and also notice the further away the trees are, the higher up they are on your painting plane. So if you want them to be closer and more prominent, you bring them down on your plane and you make them darker. It's always a good idea to stand away from your landscape, especially if it's a loose landscape, and have a look at this thing before you start painting. Look at where it shows you valleys and hills and depths, and use that to help you to place your trees and everything. It's very difficult to plan such a landscape properly if you are a beginner. So let the paint tell you where it wants you to put something. And of course you can put the trees anywhere you like and you can also add as many trees or as few as you like. It is your painting. Make sure to vary the height of the trees. That will also give the illusion of trees being further away. And then as always, ground them. Just a tiny, tiny line underneath each tree will give the impression that it's actually standing on the ground somewhere and not just floating in the air. Adding a few grasses, that definitely gives texture and interest. Notice here that the tree in the middle is the one that's closer to the front. That's why the trunk is wider and the paint is a lot darker. Now he's tr trying to balance out the painting and he's drawing some trees on the right hand side. Kind of what you do on the left, you do on the right type of thing. It doesn't always work like that, it depends on what you paint. But in this case, he needs to balance it out so that it's not too heavy on the one side. The rigger is amazing to draw out all these teeny weeny little branches. It just goes. Again, grounding the trees. And notice that he's drawing the lines 
kind of diagonally and that gives you the illusion that it's a slope that it's not a, a flat horizontal eye level plane it's more of a slope and uh, the moment that you draw the lines more diagonally in one or the other direction you will give that impression of a small hill or something that is not really flat again adding the grasses and a few dry twigs and trees in the background. The tree is working on now is basically next to the other one but because it is a little bit lower and a little bit darker it looks like it's standing in front of the, on, the one on its right. He's using the tip of the rigger just to add some more ground or shadows to the ground. And now he's adding some grasses and dry twigs in the foreground. Very lightly, don't disturb the salt and don't destroy the beautiful texture that the salt had given you. Use it to create your foliage or your trees and shrubs and grass in the foreground. Because it's in the foreground, he's using a rather dark mixture of the paint so that it brings it closer to the viewer. The rigger is very useful to do this because it can make really, really fine lines and the grasses show up nicely. Notice also that he's kind of bending the grasses on the right, bending it into the little light path and the grasses on the left bending it to the right into the light path and that sort of brings your eye into the middle of the painting because now the light path and the bent grasses focuses your eye to the middle of the painting. He's using the fan brush to make some more grass. That is a very very useful brush to have if you are struggling with painting grasses, this one is just magic. Now he's been using the paint mixes that he made previously mostly, but now he's adding pure burnt sienna. And that gives a quite a different hue to all of these grasses. So pure dioxazine, pure burnt sienna, just to build the shading into the trees and the grasses in the painting. When you use the fan brush, keep it light. The moment that you press hard or that you have a lot of paint on it, it's just going to make everything blobby. So keep it very, very light. Use only the tips of the brush. Now he's going to use a store card and he is scraping in some highlights into the wet paint there. Now you can use a cocktail stick or the back side of a brush that was sharpened or anything that has a fairly sharp edge and just scrape into the wet paint and create your highlights and your different grasses there. It kind of moves the paint out of the way and leaves the white of the paper to make the highlights. Adding some detail. And of course the splattering. You have to splatter. It seems that that is the in thing to do. And with a rigger, it is so easy to do because it 
kind of holds a lot of water and you just tap it and there it goes it sprays everywhere what is also nice with the rigger is that you can use the side of the brush to create some texture in your foliage and he used it to create the little seed pots on the grasses and now he's using the very tip of it again to draw out some more prominent trees and shrubs in the foreground. To create a better focus point for the painting, he's now using the silver black velvet number two round and he is going to paint the final trees in the foreground and these need to be rather dark and the branches and the trunk needs to be a little bit wider, a little bit more prominent and that's why he's using the bigger brush. It still does such a beautiful job as the rigger but it holds a lot more water and paint so it's just more convenient to work with. Nice crooked old tree. Tree branches are never really just straight. They can be really crooked. And uh, that's what he's achieving here by kind of wiggling the brush a little bit as he pulls it out. He's adding a few more shadows to just give a little bit more texture and definition to the background. Using the side of the brush to create more grasses and give it a little bit of a dry brush effect.
adding the last of the finishing touches. These trees usually have a lot of branches. And then we can remove the tape. The tape gives you such a beautiful border. It looks like the painting is already framed when you're done. So there we have our beautiful landscape in pink. Sign your painting, it is yours. Thank you very, very much for joining us on our watercolor journey. Happy painting.